Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, let's learn about Lambda. Let's do a quick example, quick demo of using Lambda function and then how to uh, connect that with DynamoDB. For example, if you want to get some records from DynamoDB and let's see all those things in this video, all right? So Lambda is uh, a serverless concept, right? So you don't have to worry about any servers. All you need is a piece of code that you want to run. So you don't have to maintain your own server um, just for the purpose of running some simple things. So for in that case, you can just write a simple function. It can be written in Go, Python, uh, Node.js, and many different languages. So we will take a look at how to write a simple Python code uh, for a Lambda function. And then we will uh, uh, integrate that with the DynamoDB, get some data from DynamoDB. And in my next video, I will show you how to uh, create an API gateway endpoint for that. So for this video, we will be uh, creating the function and we will be triggering that Lambda function manually. But in the real use case, it will be something that will be triggering this Lambda function. Like for example, um, if there are some files that gets inserted or files that get added to a S3 bucket, if that's an event, then that will trigger a Lambda function or if a record has been inserted into a DynamoDB table, that can generate an event and that can trigger a Lambda function. So you, you kind of need a trigger. Something has to trigger the Lambda function and the Lambda function will get executed and you will be charged for the time period the function actually executes, all right? I've logged into my AWS management console and I'm going to go into Lambda. All right, so create function and I'm going to start a function from scratch. I'm gonna call this function first lambda, and I'm going to use Python 3.7 for that. And lambda will get, this is just a basic function that I'm going to show you, so you don't have to create any role for that. But AWS Lambda service will automatically create a role for you, create a new role with basic lambda permission. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so let me move my self view, create function, and we will have a blueprint of a Python sample Python code. Creating a function takes about a few seconds, and then we should be able to see that in the console. All right, so that's our first Lambda function, and as you can see here, there's no trigger. We'll be testing this Lambda function manually. And by default, the very minimum or the bare minimum, uh, the Lambda function, need some permission to connect to the AWS CloudWatch. That's because um, whenever a function is executed, it needs to store the logs somewhere. So it will be storing the logs in the CloudWatch logs. So it has created a role for us. So that's the sample Python uh, code function. And down here you will see uh, the role. Uh, it has created first Lambda role, um, so if I go to IAM in a new tab, oh, that's okay, I open it in the same tab. And if I go to roles, so first Lambda role, so that's the role that AWS Lambda has created for us automatically. And um, yep, so let's go back to Lambda and we will try and play with that function. First Lambda, so that's our function. So that's a sample code. And if we run it, so it's a simple function that just returns hello from Lambda, that's it nothing fancy, um, test, and you need to create an event. So because we are trying to simulate it, we need an event and that event is passing some variables, but we're not using any of these variables in our function. So just for demo purpose, give it any name, create, and then we are going to test this Lambda function. We are just invoking this Lambda function. All right, so Lambda function execution successful. If you look at the details, so that's the response from the function. So the function executed successfully. And down here, you see the log output. So this log output will be stored in Amazon's CloudWatch. And if I go to CloudWatch, this time open it in a new tab, and you will see that uh, a new log group will get created for this. AWS Lambda, first Lambda, so that's our Lambda function. So for each of your Lambda function, there will be a log group created. So that's the log group, and you can see all the logs here in our CloudWatch. All right, so now uh, let's try and edit it. 
All right, so here, basic settings, how much memory it needs. The default is 128 meg, timeout. Uh, the function will take about like three seconds timeout. If it doesn't complete within three seconds, it will fail. And uh, yeah, so that's a basic uh, function. So now um, let me delete this function. This is just a basic example to show you um, how a function will look like. So click on actions, delete function, delete, and let's create a new function. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Python function. And when you trigger that function, it's going to uh, connect to the DynamoDB table and get some records back. For that, I'm going to create a DynamoDB table. And the other important thing is we need to create a role, IAM role, and assign it to this Lambda so that this Lambda has access to the DynamoDB table. Otherwise, you won't, uh, it won't work. So for that, I'm going to go to DynamoDB. First, let me create a DynamoDB table. Create table, give it a name, let's call it subscribers. Primary key, name, just a simple table. All right table is being created. So while it's getting created, let's also create an IAM role. Services, okay, so I think it's done. Items and create item. Let's add a couple of um, records to that. Name, Venkat, save. So this is the subscribers table, so I'm adding few records to it. Venkat, Alice, let's add one more item, Alice, uh, Bob, all right. So that's a DynamoDB table with three records. That's all, we don't need that anymore. And now I'm going to go to IAM and I'm going to create a role. Go to roles, create a role. I'm going to choose Lambda, next permissions. And in here, I'm going to search for DynamoDB, DynamoDB. And the uh, permission that I need is Amazon DynamoDB read-only access. So depending on what your function actually does, you might need to select different policies here. If you want uh, write access as well to the DynamoDB, uh, you need to select DynamoDB full access. Or if you're interested, you can create your own policy. So for now, I just need read-only access to my DynamoDB table. So click next tax, review, and the role name. I'm going to call it Lambda Dynamo DB read only role. All right, so create role. So role created, we've created the Dynamo DB table. So now we can go to Lambda and create a function. Lambda create a function, author from scratch. I'm gonna call this function get subscribers get subscribers i'm going to use python 3.7 for this and now i don't want a lambda service to create a role for me automatically because it's not going to work so i'm going to choose use an existing role and select the role that i just created dynamodb read only role create function all right so function created so now you can see because of the role that I attached to this Lambda function, you can see what sort of access it has. So it has access to the Lambda, CloudWatch, DynamoDB, uh, EC2, and so on. All right, so let's look at the code now. So that's our code. What I'm going to do is let's delete everything. Let's start writing the code from scratch. So I'm gonna import Boto3. So that's the AWS SDK for Python. Uh, we can use Python modules, Boto3 modules to interact with AWS services. So Boto3 and we are going to uh, connect to the DynamoDB table. So client equals Boto3 dot resource. Our resource is DynamoDB and I'm going to create another variable called table client dot table and the name of our DynamoDB table which is subscribers all right and finally subscribers equals table dot scan okay so there's a function uh, in Boto3 so table dot scan will pull all the information about the uh, the subscribers table and let's call it return none i don't want to return anything but i just want to print 
subscribers okay let's see what it returns it's a very simple lambda function I'm going to save that and I'm going to test it create a test event we're not worried about this event all right so that's done and if I test it now okay execution result successful and you can see here uh, the item it has returned is this one items name Venket Alice Bob count three it returns all the details about your table I'm only interested in the items so this one I'm only interested in the items so I can change my Python code to say table.scan it's basically a Python dictionary so I want just the items save and I'm going to test that again and now I see only uh, names Venkat, uh, Alice and Bob okay so what if I want just the uh, names not the keyword name because I know these are names right so for that let's say subscribers underscore list equals an empty string and let's do um, for subscriber in subscribers um, subscriber underscore list plus equals um, subscriber of name we want name all right and then plus let's leave a blank space print uh, we don't want the subscribers we want subscribers underscore list okay save and let's do a test name subscribers underscore is not defined all right so where is it subscribers underscore list that's not the one subscribers underscore list all right I think I made a mistake here it's not a uh, shouldn't be within the double quotes save and test your function now all right cool so that's the response we got Venkat, Alice and Bob and if I look at the details here you can see Venkat, Alice, Bob cool so we've created a Python lambda function and then we've created an IAM role just to give this lambda function the read access to our DynamoDB table subscribers and when we trigger this function manually uh, it pulled the data from the uh, DynamoDB table subscribers, so that's all looking good. And you can also look at the monitoring. Uh, so it gives you some basic monitoring about the invocation. So number of invocations is four. You can see that here. Duration, how long it took, error rate. And we've had uh, one error and the uh, rest of them were success few other details and if you want you can also look that in the uh, dashboard sorry cloud watch all right cool um, I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video how to create a simple function that interacts with uh, the AWS DynamoDB table to get the data and the next video will be exciting because um, I'll be creating an API gateway endpoint so it's a HTTPS endpoint you hit that URL and that will trigger this Lambda function. So this time we are manually invoking the function within the uh, Lambda console. But next time we will be using a HTTPS endpoint that will, when you access that HTTPS URL in your web browser, that will trigger this Lambda function, which will uh, get the data from the DynamoDB table and the response will be given back uh, in our browser. So that's what we'll be seeing in the next video. Alright, so if you like this video, please share and subscribe. I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.